it's Blue here. I thought I would do another book review. Um, this one's actually been, this book's been talked about a lot. Jimmy Fallon's just picked it as one of the hottest reads of the summer or something over there in the US. Uh, I don't know, it's winter, it's freezing down here. Um, but I thought I would give my review of Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adyemi. Tommy Adyemi. So this book is pretty much about Zilly, who um, is from a West African clan. Her people are suppressed. Um, uh, they're bound to have magic, I'm going to say. And so the invaders of the land have taken their magic. And she's pretty much... Spoiler, she finds out she has magic. She's got to save the world. Um, I don't know why everyone raves about this book. I found this book so <laughs> disappointing um, but then at the same time just a meh read. So you get this book from three different perspectives which I actually like. I like different perspectives. I think it adds value to the story. You get to see so much more behind the scenes and hopefully just a little bit of what's going on in the head if the authors don't get too carried away. So there is three point of view. So there's Zeely, the main character, there's Anan the prince, and then his sister Amari, Amara, Amari. And this is what this is this is what bugs me. It is your typical YA fantasy story. I'm sorry, it is. You've got one character who's suppressed, uh, she's suddenly found out she's got a magic ability, and now she's got to, you know, go and save the world. I've read that before. I've read that so many times. Nothing about that is new. The male character in Nan, he he's just the poor prince that is just trying to make his father proud of him. Done, dusted, read that a thousand times. And then you got Amari the princess and oh what did you know? She doesn't want to be there. She wants to run away. And she goes off with our main character, Zeely, to help save the world. I've read all this before. There is nothing exciting and new about that plot. Nothing. I'm really sorry for everyone that really loves this book. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I have my opinions. I'm entitled to them. And I just... It was... I've read it. Give me something new. You want to brag... Brag. Sorry. You want to brag about this being one of the most fantastic reads of all time, then make it unique, make it exciting, and don't make it like every other story. Original ideas, people. Please, I'm full of them. I'll give you original ideas for days. Just don't write the same stuff over and over. It kills me. <clears throat> Before I jump like too far into the negatives, I should actually say some positives, because I did give it three out of five stars on Goodreads. So one positive is I love Adyemi's writing. I thought it was so smooth. I thought she developed her characters well until I found out they were like every other characters. But the personality traits of those characters were really amazing, quite unique. And I found the setting of the story quite beautiful as well. So the personalities of the characters were completely different. She managed to switch from one person to another person. And... None of the traits of the original character followed on to the other character, which is good. I find that when authors get stuck in different perspectives, they want to write and jump to characters. Ugh, I'm muddling up my words. I'm just getting so frustrated. Uh, they jump from one perspective of a character to another. Sorry, I just started again. And they usually carry traits from the first character and bring it across to the second character. Adyami didn't do that. She was very... Convincing with her characters. I loved that they were stubborn. They were brave. I loved, loved, loved that. I just found that it kind of got a bit drowned out by the plot. Obviously the plot's, you know, in every fantasy, so, you know, nothing new. But it really dragged. So the start of the book was really, really good. Actually, not really, really good. The start of the book was good. And I was buddy reading with a few girls. And I got to like halfway and I was like, I know how this is going to end. And I told them, it's going to end like this. This is how it's going to happen. And I'm right. I was right. That's how it ended because it was predictable. 
In the middle it dragged on and on and on. There was way too much talking, not enough action. There wasn't enough explaining with what they were doing either. So it was kind of like, okay, we're doing this because, you know, the author said so. No, the author just doesn't have to say so. What the author says does not go. You can explain it to us a little bit more, please. Uh, overall, I think Jimmy Fallon could have picked a better book. Um, but that's my opinion. Uh, I hopefully want to see Ed Yami bring out some different work. Something a little bit more creative. Because uh, I really, really enjoyed her writing style. And that's actually that's pretty much the main factor of me giving it 3 out of 5 stars. So, this one's been published by Macmillan Publishing. Probably should have put this at the start of the video. I just got went straight into the rant. Just can't help myself. Just can't help myself. Um, yeah, so... It doesn't even have it on there. Oh, yes. I just skipped right past it. Yeah, so it's Macmillan, and it was published this year, 2008. I just double-checked. I thought it was 2017. I wasn't too sure. Um, but, yeah, nothing about it was just amazing. The magic was okay. There was not enough magic in the book. It needed a lot more. It was kind of like, oh, we have this like tiny little bit of magic. And we're not going to tell you about it for 240 pages. Keep reading. Uh, no. No. You brought it up. Tell me about it. I've got to know. Anyway. Um, it's a meh read. So, there was a lot of things if I wrote it I would have changed. Uh, but I sh I'm pretty sure we all feel like that. But... That's my little mini meh rant done on Children of Blood and Bone. I'll catch y'all later.